Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is video four in my how to build a socket for a prosthetic device series of videos. This video is going to pick up with coating the buck with a layer of release agent and conclude with pulling the vacuum. Now, of course, there are all kinds of different products you can use as release agents in fiberglass. Now, I've just had really good luck using it for plaster and resin. Take that for what you will. Just be sure that whatever you use, coat the entire surface of the plaster so where you don't have any porous surface showing. Otherwise, you can have issues getting the fiberglass to release. For the Gorilla wood glue, I use one, maybe two coats max. Now, what I'll be doing for this demonstration is a combination of wet layup and forging. We need the metacarpal end of the socket to be a specific size and shape so that everything fits properly when we start adding fingers to the build. That's where this set of printed dies comes into play. The inside profile is the shape and spacing that we need for the mounting plates for the metacarpals so they can swivel and yet be firmly mounted to the socket. For the actual layup, I'll be using these polyester blend toddler socks to make up the inner and outer shell. I'll also use a third sock to stabilize the fiberglass at the midpoint of the layup. For the reinforcing layers, I'll be using six layers of this fiberglass cloth, making this layup nine layers in thickness. This should make for a pretty rigid shell. For full transparency, this will actually be the third shell that I've pulled off of this buck. I had some issues with the first one because I was using some slightly out of date resin. The shop was about 50 degrees and I was using 12 drops of catalyst per one ounce of resin. This should have been enough, but whatever. The construction was seven layers thick. That made sock, two layers of fiberglass sock, two layers of fiberglass sock. It did eventually kick, but not until after I added some heat to the setup. Overall, it came out okay, and I think I'll be using this one for the rest of the build. But while I have everything set up, I might as well pull another shell. The second pull I did is a TikTok Live, and for that I used brand new resin and 15 drops per ounce. The layup was similar to the first, with the exception of two extra layers of fiberglass, making nine layers in total. So for that one, sock three layers of fiberglass, sock three layers of fiberglass, sock. This stack up was just right for the forging dies. The only thing, since I was using more catalyst, it ended up setting up just a little bit faster than what I was expecting, and I wasn't able to get all of the wrinkles out as I was adding the vacuum. It still produced a usable shell that I'll use on a future build. For today's build, I'll be using 13, maybe 14 drops of catalyst with six ounces of resin and the same nine layer layup. Hopefully I'm able to put the stack together faster or that the resin kicks a little bit slower so I'm able to smooth things out as I'm adding vacuum. Using a sock for the inner and outer layers solves a lot of the cosmetic issues that you're likely to run into if you were just to use the fiberglass roving on an organic shape like this. So you may ask, if socks are so great, why not use them for the entire build? While socks are awesome for conforming to an organic shape like this, they really don't offer any structural value. That's where this fiberglass reinforcing cloth comes in. Its fibers are woven 90 degrees perpendicular to each other, and with that will generate bidirectional strength. Now, if multiple layers are arrayed at 0 and 90 and 45, 135, you can wind up with a composite that has an excellent strength to weight ratio. And that's exactly what we're needing in the socket of a prosthetic device that's function is derived by physical force. Because all the force at the fingers is translated through the socket, specifically at the connection point where the mechanical linkages are attached, those areas need some type of reinforcement built into the shell in order to keep the anchors from ripping out of the socket under load. Generally in composites, the more layers the better. But that usually comes with an additional thickness. To get around this, we'll be putting this entire layup in a vacuum bag and removing any air or excess resin. Resin itself has no real strength. It's just the glue that holds all the parts together. Vacuum bagging allows you to thoroughly coat the fabric and then suck out any of the excess resin that you don't need, getting you closer to an optimum resin reinforcement material ratio. Now something about fiberglass cloth. The fibers themselves don't stretch, and that's what makes them so strong. But with that, that means you don't want to have a bunch of cuts in the fabric. The longer the strand, the stronger. So when you're laying up on an organic shape like this, it's best to treat it like origami and fold the fabric around, putting all of the excess material in an area of the buck that's going to be trimmed away at a later time. I'm going to be using gallon Ziploc freezer bags and paper towel shop rags as my peel ply and bleeder. I also use the shop towels to ease any of the corners that I have on the buck 
or the form so that it doesn't end up ripping the vacuum bag. Last thing you need to do is tear a hole in the vacuum bag as everything's going off and you're trying to add vacuum. So be sure to wrap up all the sharp corners as you're putting everything together. Before you get going, it's important to practice dressing the buck. And be sure you have everything laid out in a semi-organized manner. Once everything's cut, laid out, and you've practiced, you're ready to go. To start, I'll put three nitro gloves on each hand. This works pretty well for when your glove gets a little too sticky. You can just peel off the outermost and keep going. For this build, I'll be mixing up six ounces of resin and 13 drops per ounce. So about 80 drops of catalyst in total. Be sure to mix thoroughly, but remember, clock's ticking. Start out by dressing the buck with one of the socks. Super important. Be sure to turn this one inside out so the smooth surface is on the inside. Coat this sock with resin and start building the stack. Once the third layer of fabric is painted out, put the stabilizing sock on. It doesn't matter inside or outside. It's just there to keep all the layers of fiberglass from getting out of hand as you continue on the build. Once you're to where you're putting on the outside layer, be sure that you have your alignment correct because you can't just stretch it and shift it around. If it's a little crooked, just leave it. Doesn't matter. You'll fix it in post. Now paint the area that's going to receive the forged dies with enough resin that you don't have any dry spots and you won't end up with any voids. Next, super quick, bolt everything together, making sure that the dies are all the way down on the buck. Now coat the cover sock with any of the resin that you have left in the cup. Next, pull the inner bag over the layup and start smoothing out all the wrinkles. Add paper towels to any of the sharp corners. Seal up the vacuum bag and just start to add vacuum. You'll see everything just start to shrink. Now's your time to start taking out some of the wrinkles. Once you have things kind of straightened out, close the valve a little and watch it start to shrink down all the way. Now take a moment and work any of the excess resin either into the bleeder or into an area of the layup that's gonna be trimmed away later. But be careful not to squeeze so much resin out that you end up with dry spots. If you do, it can be fixed later on, but better if you don't. That's what I have for this video. Next video, I'll be pulling the buck and trimming the shell. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos. And if you have time, please leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching.